Hey, it's Scott here from Golden Fly Shop, and today I'm actually gonna tell you about a little secret to make your beers taste better. Uh, it's a spice called tahine. Just douse it in it. Perfect. No, just kidding. We're actually gonna be talking about doing a little Euro nymphing. I think Euro nymphing sometimes gets a bad rap uh, because you're not doing the same beautiful casting that you'd be doing fishing dry flies. Um, but it's a highly effective way to catch fish and to be the best angler that you can be, you should be able to be put in any situation with any type of rig um, and perform well. So that's what we're gonna be working on today. And with this video, I'm gonna focus on just showing you guys a few different rigging options um, that we like to roll with here at the shop. Yeah, let's get into it. So the cool thing about what I've got going on now is I've actually got a floating line on this rod right now. Um, and my favorite option in the Euro nymphing line setup is one of these Rio Euro shorties, which I've got here on a foam spool. All that is, is 20 feet of level line and it directly tapers into that 14 foot piece of cider tippet. Um, and that's really nice being the shorty because I can take that on and off anytime I want. And a lot of these Euro rods being long and soft, uh, they actually perform pretty well as dry fly rods. So it allows me to easily change up to fishing dry flies or even just fishing uh, under an indicator quite readily. And so I just have that little foam spool with me at all times. And I can take and put my tapered leader back on this whenever I'm ready to change. Um, so I'll go over with with you kind of how I'm setting that up. Um, as you can see here, and if you come buy one of these from the shop, we'll get this dialed in for you. But I've just double nail knotted this uh, to create, you know, basically a welded loop. Um, and that allows me to slide it over my fly line more readily. And the reason why we want to be using these level lines um, is because the fly line being heavy, like a normal fly line being heavy, uh, out into the eyes and guides of your rod is gonna take away from that sensitivity. So having that thinner line is very important. So real quick, I'm gonna take off this tapered leader. Ooh, it's that new Bonnie patch full mesh for extreme breathability, which we obviously need in this very rainy day uh, where it's about 55 degrees. Um, but it's something you should be looking out for coming soon to the shop, I guess, you know. It's pretty fly. You've gotten a lot of compliments on it. All right, so just getting this out to where it's a comfortable distance. 
Okay. So I've got my Scientific Angler's MPX with the welded loop right here, okay? Now, what I like to do, this involves a little bit of uh, parking lot space so you don't tangle this whole thing up. And I'm gonna take this and undo it and kind of just spool it out, okay? Now, I've got a loop. I'm just gonna put this on like I would any tapered leader, okay? You go here, and then, you know, some people like to do that. Sometimes I'll go find the end. We'll just do this for right now. So, here's that level line I was talking about, which then tapers in to my cider, okay? You can see that's a smooth transition, right? And then we go down the rest of the way on that cider that's built in. And a lot of times I've found, uh, you know, it depends on how deep you're fishing and how much, you know, tippet you have off the end of that cider. Um, but you're gonna be handling that level line in your hands near the reel, but the cider is gonna be out in the rod, which again, adds to that sensitivity. So now I've got a tippet ring. Okay, from the end of my cider to some more cider, okay? And uh, the reason why I've added this second section of cider uh, is just to increase my visibility. Sometimes under certain light conditions, it's a little bit harder to see that red, pink cider. So all I've done is taken some two-tone um, umpqua tippet and created myself a little bit, uh, you know, about a three-foot section of whiskered cider. Why don't I show you guys how to rig up my little whisker rig, which we're gonna attach to the end of that built-in cider. Um, so, let me take and pull this out. Okay. Snip that. And what I'm gonna do is cut it again at that color change. Okay. Cutting it again at that color change. So two different pieces. Okay. You can do either a blood or a double surgeons. It literally doesn't matter. I'm a double surgeons person, so that's what I'm gonna do. And I'm tying it big intentionally so I can leave some extra tags. Lick the knot. And then I can choose, right? Okay, let's say I want my cider to be the orange or my whisker to be the yellow, the neon yellow. So I'm just gonna run a little half itch because I tied the, the surgeons just to make it kick out a little bit better. But if you want to, you know, just do a blood, that's certainly fine. And I'm half itching it over the post of my old. And then there it's sticking out. I'll trim my old one and then you can you can keep these these are about the sections are about maybe a foot and a half or so um and i like to cut them a little bit shorter maybe to be about a foot um just so i can have you know three or maybe even four color changes in that whisker cider section and you know it's just a heck of a lot easier to see all that junk floating in the air um, and it's a little bit more responsive being thinner um, and having that whisker, right, to slight little vibrations under the water, which may, um, you know, mean that you've got a strike. So, yeah, here's your whisker rig. And then to the end of that, I've got my tippet ring. And then off of there, I'm going to put on however much tippet I need, depending on the water. Um, I like to have this whiskered section of cider either just above the water or slightly in the water. Um, so, you know, fishing here at Deckers today, uh, a lot of these fish are pretty shallow, so I'm not gonna have to do a super long section um, of floro uh, beneath that cider. Um, but if I wanna hop into a deeper hole, I can certainly dip this cider into the, into the water. All right, I think it's time to get some flies on here and get out in the water and get wet in this rain and catch some fish. 
All right, now we're ready to throw some tippet on to the end of our cider and then throw some flies on. So I'm gonna take, I think I'll go about three feet. And I lied, I'm gonna go 5X, I'm not gonna go 4X. All right, so I'm just measuring with my wingspan, I'm about 6'2". Um, so I've got it all the way extended out there and then out to the middle. And obviously I'm gonna lose some of that with my knots. I may go a hair longer, okay? I'm gonna just tie my clinch or fisherman's to that tippet ring. I do a weird one that my grandfather taught my father. So his name's Huey, so we've adorned it the Huey knot. Okay. I'm gonna come down to the end here. This is where I'm gonna make a tag, okay? So that's where my first fly up top is gonna go. Okay, so I like to do them with a surgeon's knot because the tags on the surgeon's knot are a lot stronger than the tags with a blood knot. Um, so this is kind of tricky and you'll just get, get used to it playing with it. But I'm leaving my lower tag and giving it some more length than I would my upper. So I'm gonna do my, my surgeon's. Bam. Yeah. And do the triple. Okay. Lick. So I've got that tag ready. But first, I'm going to measure about where I want my, my bomb fly, my lead fly, my point fly, whatever you want to call it. It's that heavy fly that's going to be at the bottom of the rig, and it's what's going to give uh, this tight line nymphing, you know, the, the tight uh, connection to the bottom and to the fish that we're going to be able to feel or see with the movement of our leader. Um, so here I've got the same fly tied with the same material except you'll notice that the collars are different. So what I've done is actually color coded them based on weight, okay? So brown collar here has no lead wire on the bottom. Orange collar right here has lead wire. Today I wanna use lead wire because I wanna get down faster. Um, and that's something that I commonly do on my Euro flies just so I can you know, know in the box which ones are which. And you know, all these, all these jigs, right here all these weights all this material is stuff that we've got in the shop and tying your own euro flies is a really beneficial thing because you can really dial in exactly what weight and what sink rate you know you want to get with your flies so that's something that i've done here and you can go absolutely crazy with it um, and we've got all those materials weights um, bead heads hooks all that stuff in the shop so come see us Obviously, it's raining. There's a lot of water coming off of the banks, so it's gonna push those worms into the water. This is a great option for the water conditions. So, I'm gonna take my, take my lead wire. Right. I'm gonna take my lead wire wrapped fly. Tie that on. I'm gonna get what weight or what distance I want from my tag. Dude, do I dare show the world that I'm tying on a double worm rig? <laughs> Dude, they're deleting this worm. All right, look, I normally wouldn't do this, but it's muddy. We're going two worms, because I don't really care. Yo, yo, yo. I kind of want to throw a big ass hopper. Well, it's a little cold. 